Hey guys, it's Fisher Jackson here, and I'm here bringing you another tutorial. Today we're going to go over a few things in Ableton's piano roll. But anyway, people will talk about Ableton's piano roll, about, you know, how they think it's not that great and everything. But I'm actually quite fond of it myself. So let's just go ahead and dive right in there. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I went ahead and wrote some chords. I wrote this chord progression in F sharp minor. Yeah, so those are the chords. And I'm just gonna give you a little quick sample of, you know, about how I made it. Pretty much, bam. You can hit zero, highlight any keys, any notes and hit zero. Or right click them and go to activate or deactivate. Turn them off and on. Find hidden zero is just way quicker. But it's a really useful tool. I'll make some chords like this. I'll just deactivate the top notes and leave me with the bass line. So activation and deactivation of notes, pretty helpful. For getting things to fit on the screen, you have the left over here, which scales it uh, vertically, and the top, which goes horizontally. So also, if you double click those, say you're zoomed out or something, and you want to just show this amount right here. And double click with nothing selected at all. You can just double click on the left side and it will fit it automatically to the screen on that view. Same, same thing goes with the other way. And if you're zoomed in, you can double click when you have nothing selected. Bam, it'll take you to the top. Another cool feature is the fold feature right here, which will only show you the notes that you're being, that you're already using, that you're playing. This is a really cool tip. You can do something like this, just make you a note, move it over one, and pretty much just, you know, go ahead and get your key set up, however you like, and then just fold it. You'll have access. I find myself not doing that too much. I just try to remember what's in the key and what isn't. <coughs> Excuse me about that. So anyway, you have to activate and deactivate MIDI which is zero or like I said you can right click and do it manually the drop down box there is the zoom in feature you can also select a certain area say you want to zoom in on this half of the impression you can zoom in select it double click it and you zoom in on that same thing as far as other way if you want to zoom in on like these two notes only mainly you can double click it and it'll So I've got that in there. Let's talk about a few of the other features we've got in Ableton Live's piano roll. Over here in this little area, we have the notes section. Plenty of features here. One, there's the half time and double time feature. So half time or double time, half time. Notes just move the notes around. There's also the legato. To resize any notes you have by holding down shift and using the left and right arrow keys. But there's also the legato button, which is when you select a note, legato, it'll extend that note until the next note. Okay? Just like so. It's pretty useful for making chord progressions because you know often I'll do something like this. This is just an example. I'll select them all. I'll hit legato because I am lazy. And bam, you have your face filled out. <coughs> Sorry about that again. Okay. And I'm just going to legato these to get these back up there. So, right now we're sitting at a four bar clip, four bar loop. You can tell because right here is 4.4, .4 and the next obviously will be five. So, the start of five is the end of four, if that makes sense. Start of five bars right at the start of the fifth bar at the end of the fourth bar. So you've got four complete bars here. So let's talk about some of the other keyboard shortcuts for changing the the arrangement size, I guess is what you can call it down here. You can see we're at one sixteenth notes. So every note we put in here, which you can double click or if you push B, go into draw mode 
Every note of these is a 16th. Also, to change that around, you can do Control 2, which will make it smaller size, you know, which will make it bigger. And you can do Control 1, bring it back down, at like so. So you can just quickly, you can see, you can quickly go between different sizes just to make things easier. Really handy. That's Control 1 and Control 2, like I said. Control 1 gives you a smaller size. Control 2 makes the size bigger. There is Control 3, which is going to toggle the triplet grid on and off. As you see, it's indicated with the T right there. So, like, just watch these lines right here. See? You can fit three in that section now. Rather than being, you know, you can only fit one here and one there. You can do a triplet now. Here, I'll just take this back here but you can use the left arrow and the right arrow up and down just to move anything freely and I'm gonna deactivate these chords really quick and we're just gonna <coughs> excuse me we're just gonna see how this sounds exactly just pretty much just a simple triplet you can use control a at any time to select everything on the screen and go ahead and reactivate that again. Like I said, using the zero key on the number pad, or like I said, you can right click it and then choose to manually deactivate it or activate it. So we've gone through control one, control two, control three to toggle the tri triplet grid on and off. And the last one in here is gonna be control four, which just completely toggles the grid off and on. So you can move it, you know, without having to be attached to the grid at all. And you can see it's off down here or just control four again to get it back to the grid and you can snap it back to the grid how you like. So let's see here. There's a few more things I want to go over real quick since we're working in the uh, piano roll. There is this note, little headphone note right here where without it enabled, you know, you can't hear anything. Just kind of beneficial and kind of not at certain times. And with it, you can hear everything you do. It's really great for you know times when you want to make something and you know you want to hear it out so like this okay. it's like that and you can hear it out but sometimes that can get you know a little annoying another thing I want to talk about is some of the commands when moving MIDI notes around inside of the piano roll. So I'm just going to double click in here. And if you have yourself when you're not in draw mode, like I said, you push B to get in the draw mode, or you can right click and go there, draw mode, or additionally, you can go up here and turn draw mode on. But if you're not in draw mode, if you hold down alt over any of your notes, you'll get this line right here and it'll show as you can see in this little area, it'll show you the velocity. So if you hold down the alt, you can go between, you know, one to the max velocity really quick, really simple through all your MIDI notes, just really simple, as well as get to them down here, of course, like standard. And we can just, you know, raise the velocity here. Just super easy stuff right there. Quickly fine tuning things. Okay, I'm gonna pop that back down. Never really look at that. So I do have this, like I said, you just hold Alt, get that going for you. There's also the duple loop button right underneath the legato button, which is pretty nice. Right now we're sitting on a four bar loop. Like I said, you can tell from right here in the length section, you know, you can make this longer or you can make it shorter. So I double click to get it back into focus view. But duple loop does what it sounds like. It duplicates the loop. Now we have, you see, we can have, we have an eight bar loop and it just duplicated it for us. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Got a little cough going on today. But I don't really need all that right there. Like I was saying, I think the last thing I'm gonna cover over is navigating with your MIDI notes inside of the 
So let's say you double click in a note. You see we're at quarter notes right here, one fourth. So from there, like I said, you can go left, right, up and down. You can go shift up to go up an octave or shift down to go down octaves. Like I said, if you hold shift and go right and left, extend the note size. So one thing I do when I'm making my bass lines, progressions, or anything like that, a lot of times I'll just use solely the, I'll just solely use the keyboard. You know, there's no really need to use the mouse. You start off with the note here, especially if you had the listen enabled. Start with the note here, duplicate it. I'll just probably move it over a little bit. Just down, move it down, down here. Change the note size anything you want it's very simple just to you know get something out something quick really quickly just the keyboard that you have on your computer another cool tip is let me resell this there we go is when you have a note selected you can even go let's say from this note to that note to that note you can even go through the notes individually without even having to change or move anything you hold down the control key or command key from Mac and you can go up by hitting up and that will take you forward which is to the right from bottom to top or you can go control down it will take you from top to bottom and take you backwards left and just that way right there you can just easily zoom through things and just make whatever you want so that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. That's just a little bit about how I use the piano roll in Ableton. You just get accustomed to it. I want to delete all these notes down here. I can either select all the notes down here or I can select a key and just loop, select it, delete it. We're out of there. Okay, one last thing I'd like to show you is I'd like to show you a little bit of MIDI resampling. Just found out not so long ago. It's pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do is I have these chords, like I said, they're still here. And as you can see, it's just these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to put an arpeggiator on this. Oh, look, there's already one on here. But for the sake of the video, go to MIDI effects, arpeggiator, and you just double click it or you can drag it on there to get it on. So now we have something that sounds like this. And of course we have all the parameters here and that we can change, you know, 16th note, such and such. But one cool thing is, as you see, it doesn't show you what's going on with the MIDI. It just plays the chords. What we can do is we can make a new MIDI track and that's going to be control shift T to make a new MIDI track or command shift T if you're on a Mac to make a new MIDI track as well as you can right click here yeah cl right click on any of the tracks and just go to insert new audio track or new MIDI track and have everything you need so what we're going to do is we're going to set that blank new MIDI track set it to record and able and here under the input section we're just gonna include choose plaid, which is right above us. So plaid with the chords there. Now that we have that set up to receive the MIDI input from there, literally all we have to do is hit the record button and we should get something like this. Whoops. Okay, you gotta have it the right section though, guys. That's pretty much about it for today. There's plenty of things you can do with this now as you've got it out of the corded form. Just remember those little shortcuts, learn how to navigate the piano roll, and you should be in great shape, guys. Plenty you can do there is fully capable, really quick in my opinion. So that's about it. I do ask if you enjoyed the video or found even one thing useful, learn one thing new, to comment, share it, like it, 
tell your mother, grandmother, tell somebody, scream it out the window, scream Fish Jackson out the window, something, anything. But anyway, it's been a pleasure, guys, and like always, looking for tutorial requests. So if you have something you want me to go over or anything or cover, uh, just drop me a comment. And I'll see what I can do, see if I can figure something out for you guys. But that's about it. Until next time, guys, you take it easy.